Welcome back to Dragonfall. We're in Harrow's office and Glory's having a bad time. I trust her judgment. I think that she's probably not completely imagining it, but maybe she is. Part of me wants to honor the, um, the feeling that she's having and recognize that even if it's completely imagined, it's still valid. Her memories of this place are deeply traumatic. But there's also part of me that's pretty sure that whatever comes, it's either going to remind her that this is in her mind, or I don't think it's going to be Harrow just walking in. That would be very anticlimactic. And I don't think it's going to be Marta either. If it's already in the room... Uh, continue reading. You keep an eye out. I have to finish this. There might be something in here that we need. The final pages of the manifesto devolve into semi-cohesive rants about anarchy, social Darwinism, free love, and the, or and the horned god. You've seen this kind of thing before. Harrow's philosophy is collapsing under its own weight. Unfortunately, none of his cultists seem to have caught on to that fact. Done. This philosophy of Harrow really starts to break down. Glory lets out a startled cry, cutting your sentence short. Out of the corner of your eye, you see her wheel to face something behind you. All at once, the room fills with a slaughterhouse smell. A smell like blood and bile and feces. The stench of an abattoir. Oh. As you turn, you catch sight of something sliding into the world. It looks like a charred man with a pair of tortured faces where its shoulders should be. The thing burns like a Roman candle, spitting white-hot sparks in a fiery plume. An oily substance runs down between its dangling legs and spatters onto the floor. And where those drips land, they burn. Alice, look out. Ow. Jesus. Um... Hopefully that's, it's just the one. Uh, let's try and strip armor. First, this should be a relatively easy hit. And he's bleeding. Cool. Um, okay. Do I just try and kill it and heal the 19 damage when the round ends? I'm hoping I can do that. That was not bad. All right, cool. That was easy. The body of the thing that attacks you begins to dissolve at the moment of death. As you watch, its tissues break down into a growing slick of bubbling pitch and rendered fat. What the hell was that? Something from another place. Glory stands at the stares at the remains of the creature, now, dark, now a dark stain on the library's floorboards. Like I said outside, the boundaries between the physical world and the astral space are weak here. Things can come through. <laughs> I kind of like the way this is phrased, but it's too, it's too crass for the tone I want to go for. Uh, I think, I believe you. Let's clear, let's clear out before it happens again. She nods. We need to get moving anyway. Let's go. This appears to be a standard terminal. A login prompt glows on the screen. Don't have decking, so we'll leave it alone. 
That's all for this room. Are there any other rooms I haven't opened up yet? That's locked. That's open. I haven't opened this one yet. Uh, if we open it, are we going to have a bad time? We're going to quick save and find out. I'm hoping this can be negotiated. The acolytes on the other side of the door are still speaking with one another. You hear the occasional guffaw of laughter. Open the door. Okay, it's immediate combat, so... I think I'm going to... Reload. Wow, that's, um... That's disappointing, actually. Alright. Still don't know why this game engine struggles so much to load. All right. Into the, uh, into here, I guess. I really didn't miss anything else. There's no door over there? I don't think so. Um, all right, well. Here goes nothing. Yeah, I guess so. Game saved. Interesting. Well, the initiate closest to the door whips his head up to look at you. He takes a stutter step back in alarm, then opens his mouth to cry for help. You don't want to do that. Glory looks deep into the initiate's eyes, transfixing him. We're not here to hurt you. I don't like either of these. Um, We're friends of Harrow's. Don't bother calling Marta out here. We're just going to, in there to have a word with her. The initiate eyes you nervously. His gaze flits to glory, then falls, on, falls to her cyber limbs. He swallows. Uh, yeah. Yeah, okay. He takes a step back. You go do that. There's a third guy there, but we can't talk to him for some reason. Interesting. The initiate by the door is staring at Glory's limbs, her eyes wide. She's a mousy little thing, probably somewhere in the vicinity of 17 years old, with purple contact lenses and a shock of blue hair. She glances up at Glory, blinking. You used to live here, didn't you? I've seen your picture before. Glory's expression remains neutral. Really? I think so. I didn't look at it long. It was in a room that I wasn't supposed to be in, but I'm pretty sure that was you. It probably was. You're right, I did live here a long time ago. I was like you back then. A scared kid, brought here by Marta for a chance at a new life. I like Marta. She's so nice. I always feel safe with them when I'm with her. Most adults aren't like that. They either don't notice you or they do for the wrong reasons. But Marta, she cares about us. There's a long pause. And then the initiate looks to you. Screwing up her courage, she speaks. Can... Can I ask you a question? Go ahead. Ask away. Well, I overheard Marta talking with Mr. Harrow yesterday. I think that they were talking about our meeting with him. The one that Marta was just telling us about. Where we'll learn to see the world in a different way. Go on. Well, I couldn't really hear the whole conversation. It was all muffled. But I would what I could hear was kind of weird. 
Mr. Harrow said some stuff about a shrine, and then it sounded like he changed the subject because he started talking about dinner. Something about chopping up meat. Well, Marta got really upset, said they're too new, they're not ready, make the older ones do it, stuff like that. But then Mr. Harrow said a couple, some other things, and then she calmed down again. When she left, she was smiling. And so I was just wondering, do you know what they were talking about? I want to make sure that Marta is okay, but I can't ask her about it because I don't want her to find out I was eavesdropping. Oh, I don't think asking them if they want to go open the fridge is the best way to handle this engagement. Um, I, uh, I don't really like laying it at Glory's feet either, but sorry, I'm new here myself. Glory, do you have any ideas? Could be any number of things. She turns to face the initiate. Her voice is gentle. I wouldn't worry about it, sweetie. We'll make sure Marta is okay. All right, but don't tell her that I told you. Please? Don't worry. We won't. The girl smiles sheepishly and steps back. As you pass by her on your way to the door, Glory shoots you a sidelong glance. I don't know for certain what Harrow has planned for those kids, but I do know one thing. Whatever it is, we aren't going to let it happen. Agreed. Well. I guess through this door is the next thing. It feels... I'm surprised there isn't... I mean, well, I guess I'm just not used to seeing uh, the the main things be progressed this quickly. But I guess, I guess since there are four objectives, it's just oh god, stop. Okay. Um, well, I think I'm gonna cut the episode and then we'll check out the door in the next one. See you guys then.